Uh, in this segment, we will solve another example focusing on complete uh, MRP matrix. So here we have an end item A that has two sub-assemblies B and C and B consists of uh, D and E and C also has D as well as F. So given the following product tree, explode, offset, and determine the gross and net requirements. All lead times are one week in this case. And the quantities required are shown in parentheses. The master production schedule calls for 100 A's to be available in week five. There are 20 D's available. All other on-hand balances are zero. So, so the gross requirements for, for product A are 100 in week 5. They are the gross requirements of 100. So, there are, there are no schedule seats, no previous balances, so we will have the net requirements to be to be 100 as well. So plan order receipt will be 100, so based on lead time of one week, plan order release will be 100. Then we, we move to item B, so that is the, uh, the child of A, so its gross requirements will be determined based on planned order release of A. So that will be 100 into 2 because each A requires 2 Bs. So that will be 200. So it is given that we have 20 available, 20 Bs available. So we will carry those 20. So the net requirements in week 4 will become uh, 200 minus 20, that is 180. So planned order receipt will be 180. So corresponding planned order release based on lead time of one week will be 180 in week three. So next we have C. So C is also the component or sub-assembly of A. So its gross requirements will also will be determined by the planned order release of A. So that will be 100 here. So no on hand, no schedule received. So net requirements will also be 100. Planned order receipt of 100. So planned order release of 100. Because the lead time is one week, so we will offset. Uh, uh, we will offset according to according to that one week. So what we have done so far is that we need to start making A at the beginning of week four. So we need 200 Bs and 100 Cs at the beginning of week four. So in order to have that, we need to start making B equal to 180 at the start of week three so, so that we have these 180 at the beginning of week four plus these 120, so total 200, these are available to start making uh, 100 days. So same is about, about C. So we need to have 100 Cs available at the beginning of week four. So in order to have those 100, we need to start their, their production or their purchase at the beginning of week three. So again, we are ignoring the safety lead time in this case. We are also ignoring the scrap factor safety stock as well. So next is this component D. Now this D is uh, the child of B. It is also required in C. So its requirement is coming from both B and C. So based on the requirement uh, from B. So that was 180. So we need 180 
plus two Ds are required for each C. So for C we have this hundred, so this hundred into two, so that will be two hundred. So we need three eighty actually three eighty Ds in the beginning of period three. So there are no scheduled receipts, no projected available. So net requirements will also be three eighty. Plan order receipt of three eighty. Lead time is one week. So planned order release will be three eighty as well. So that is for D. Uh, e is the component of B. So one E is required for each B. So we will have this one eighty. Here. So again, no schedule receipts. So net requirements of 180, plan order receipt of 180, and planned order release of 180. So that is simple for E. F is the component of C. So C. So this 100 will be the gross requirement for F. Net requirements will be. Net requirements will be 100 as well. So, plan order receipt of 100 and plan order release of 100. So that was a relatively simple example, but we sort of discussed all concepts that we discussed so far. Uh, that is the lead time offsetting, ex exploding, and uh, uh, the low level code as well. For example, in this case, D was having a low level code of uh, two for both uh, B and C. Uh, B, what, what we didn't discuss uh, the safety stock or safety lead, I mean, this example as well.